The following is the second installment of our Stereoisomers Explained lecture. I'd like to begin this particular portion of our lecture by reviewing what we talked about in the first uh, series, and that is comparing the different properties of compounds and how they uh, translate into them being either enantiomers, diastereomers, meso compounds, or identical compounds. Recall that non-superimposable mirror images are enantiomers in which all stereocenters have been inverted and optical activity is present. In the case of superimposable mirror images which contain chiral centers, we're talking about meso compounds, those containing equal and opposite stereocenters which make that compound not optically active. Non-superimposable non-mirror images result when some but not all stereocenters are inverted. And we call these compounds diastereomers, which do exhibit optical activity. And finally, in the case where we have a superimposable compound with chiral centers that is not its own mirror image, we're actually talking about the same compound. And so it's going to have identical stereocenters throughout. Now that we've talked about this again in general, let's talk about a specific example of a compound which has each of these stereoisomers. Let's begin by considering two different stereoisomers of the molecule 2,4-dichloropentane. Shown in this slide are two of those isomers. Notice that they have all the same atom bond connectivity, but that geometrically they appear different to one another. This is a bit more easy to see if we draw these out as a perspective skeletal structure. Notice the orientation of the chlorine atoms either above or below the plane of the page, and how they make each molecule look distinct. Now if we do our stereo center assignments here, we discover that the molecule on the left side of the slide is an RR dichloropentane. And that the molecule on the right would be a 2S4S dichloropentane. If we place a mirror plane between the two and do our analysis to determine if they are in fact reflections, we see that the outer chlorines are both in front of the page, the inner chlorines are both behind the page, therefore this molecule is, or these two molecules are, mirror images of one another. The next step in comparing two stereoisomers to determine their relationship is to determine whether or not they are superimposable. So if I move my molecules in an attempt to superimpose them, we see that the chlorines do not align appropriately. Any attempt to create this alignment by rotation or translation of one or both of the molecules fails. Because of this, we can say that these two molecules are non-superimposable. So we've determined that they are non-superimposable mirror images of one another. This is the definition of an enantiomer. Let's move on and look at another two stereoisomers of 2,4-dichloropentane. In this case, as you can see, we've changed the stereochemistry at one of the two centers. If we place a mirror between the two and look for a reflection, we're disappointed in this case because we have one molecule with an R-S stereochemistry and another with an S-S stereochemistry. Recall our practical di uh, diastereomer definition tells us that if some but not all of the stereocenters have been inverted, we're likely to be looking at diastereomers. And this in fact is true. We notice that the exterior chlorines do reflect, but the interior chlorines are in alternate positions. Therefore, these are non-mirror images of one another. In the second step of our analysis, we will again overlay the molecules and compare them to be sure they are actually distinct molecules. Notice that one of my two centers does not properly overlap in the orientation given. And even on rotating or translating one or both, I still cannot obtain an overlap. Therefore, these are indeed distinct stereochemical isomers. Because they are non-superimposable and are non-mirror images, they meet the criterion for diastereomers. A 
As a third example, let's take these two molecules, 2,4-dichloropentane, in which I have two different stereocenters. Notice that in this case, I placed all the chlorines coming out of the page. Therefore, it's evident that there's a mirror plane between these two molecules. And in fact, if I look at the stereochemistry, I see that the interior chiral center has been inverted from S to R, and that the exterior chiral center has been inverted from R to S. So these are in fact mirror images of one another. What they are also is the same molecule. I can translate one molecule over and superimpose them perfectly. So we're not really dealing with two distinct stereoisomers. Rather, we're dealing with one molecule containing chiral centers, but which is itself not chiral. This is the definition of a meso compound. So it's better represented as a single entity rather than two separate isomers, simply because they can be overlaid, they'll act exactly the same, because they are the same. So let's sum up all of the different relationships that we've been able to explore using this molecule 2,4-dichloropentane. Recall that it contains two chiral centers, each of which contain the same four substituents. This gives me a 2 by 2 matrix of potential stereocenters. I'll have an SS possibility, an RR possibility, an RS, and an SR. So let's begin by comparing the relationships among these four molecules by looking at the two at the top. The SS and RR are reflections of one another which are non-superimposable. Therefore, we would call these two enantiomers of one another. The lower set of molecules on the page, the RS and SR enantiomers, are in fact superimposable. So although they reflect, we can't really call them enantiomers because they're in fact the uh, same identical molecule. When this happens, we call this a meso compound. And I'm going to represent it as a single compound in this instance because that's what all meso compounds are. But recall that stereoisomerism is a relationship between two compounds. And so we can compare the, for example, the SS version of our compound to our meso compound. When we do this, we discover that we have diastereomers, which are non-superimposable, but not mirror images of one another. And we obtain a similar relationship when we compare the RR version to our meso compound. So as you can see, these names, enantiomers, diastereomers, are in fact relationships between two molecules. So it's not correct to say the SS version of my compound is an enantiomer. It is only correct to say, that, to say that if it is an enantiomer of the RR version of our compound. Now in our previous case, we were fortunate because we were able to make a meso compound and that simplified our relationships. So what I'd like to do now is show you a grid of all the relationships available in a compound with two distinct chiral centers rather than two equal chiral centers. Because we can't combine the two molecules at the bottom to form a single meso compound, they are in fact enantiomers of one another, we arrive at a set of relationships which looks something like this, where each molecule is an enantiomer of one other and a diastereomer of two others. So take some time and look at these very carefully, identify which chiral centers are in play and how and why each of these relationships has evolved and you should be ready to do some serious analysis of some real organic molecules.